Dark Souls board game has been around for several years now and the new core sets that are coming up bring new rules and ways to play the game. In addition to that, several rules for the base game and the expansions have been updated and today we will show you all of them in details. We will go through the character heroic actions, combat rules updates, upkeep update and much more. Hi, my name is Nick and we are Tabletop Duo. Grab your favorite drink and let's start! We'll start with the update on the heroic actions. The heroes on the base game have not been given heroic action updates yet, but if you are playing with the heroes from the characters expansion, here are the ones that had updates. For the thief, this character heals 2 damage and recovers 2 stamina, then they flip their luck token to the ready side, and the change here is that before you could only do that action once per spark, which again made no sense at the time. For the Pyromancer, when this character makes a magical attack, it gains an additional physical resistance. And again, they removed the once per spark restriction. For the Cleric, this character and each other character on the same or adjacent node heals 2 damage. For the Mercenary, you get the attack of one of your equipped weapons to cost 0 stamina. For the Sorcerer, its next magical attack gains infinite range and costs 0 stamina. And for the Deprived, you get to exchange any number of equipment cards between your dashboard and inventory without having to visit Blacksmith Andre. And again, those three uh, classes I just mentioned, you don't have the restriction per spark, which for me, it made no sense to have that restriction, so those are going to be good improvements. Now let's talk about the changes to the bonfire. So instead of spending one soul to draw and obtain the next treasure, when you want to purchase treasure, just draw the top four cards for the treasure deck and place them face up. Then players can purchase any of these cards by spending one soul per card. Once you finish doing the upgrade, you return the remaining cards to the bottom of the treasure deck. You can do this action once per visit to the bonfire, which means you can do it once per spark. There's also an update to the upgrade card system. So upgrade cards now can be removed from armor and also weapons and returned to the inventory at any time without using blacksmith under services. Before, you could only remove armor card upgrades. Before we go to the combat rules updates, if you're just starting to play Dark Souls board game and you have questions about the game rules, check our how to play video by clicking on the link above or in this video's description. Alright, so let's go for the combat rules updates. There's a lot of stuff here to cover. So the first change is in the endurance bar. So now characters only get killed if the endurance bar is full and another damage or stamina token is added. This gives a little bit of breathing for when you want to do a risky move, for example, to use the rest of your stamina and do like a last hit before finishing a boss or just to tank damage. Talking about endurance bar, there is also another change. So when a character starts their activation, they recover 3 stamina points instead of 2. And this for me is a big change that will make players try more expensive attacks. Next change is regarding movement. After each player finishes their turn, each one of the other players can move their character up to one node. Example, so player A plays their turn, now every other player will move their character up to one node, then monsters attack. Then player B plays their turn, then every other player moves their characters up to one node, then all monsters attack and so on. This makes the game much easier since most of the enemies in the base game hit players when they are on the same node as the character, so you can decide or not if you want to add this rule. Would you use it on your playthrough or you would keep this rule away? It's a question for you guys to answer on the comments. Next combat rule is related to the frostbite condition. So characters with the frostbite recover one less stamina at the start of their turn instead of having to spend one additional stamina to walk, run or dodge. Next, let's talk about the updates on enemy attack resolution. If the enemy's attack is physical, add a number of dice equal to the target equipped card's block value and also add a number of dodge dice equal to the target's equipped card's uh, dodge value. Otherwise, if it's a magical attack, add the number of dice in the equipped card's resist value and also the dodge dice. If the number of face-up dodge results is greater than the enemy's dodge difficulty, they miss the attack. And if you're not able to dodge, then you just sum up the block or resist value and you compare with the damage as usual. So this will be a great addition and I think it makes combat for dodge-based characters much more palatable. 
And that's the last update on the combat rules. Next, let's talk about a, a couple of props updates that are really interesting. Starting with the barrels, which had a, like a major overhaul. So if a model moves onto the same node as the barrel, you discard the token. You don't need to spend one stamina to walk over a tile with a barrel anymore. That's gone. But at the end of the encounter, that includes barrels, you roll a black die for each remaining barrel and you gain a number of souls equal to the number rolled. I know it feels very strange and different from what you get in the game, but well, at least you get extra souls. That's, uh, that's cool, right? Now for the gravestones, they also have a big overhaul on the design of the rules for them. So when you are in an adjacent node to a gravestone, you can spend your turn's action to look at the top card from the treasure deck and return it after. Once you do that, you remove the gravestone token. You can do that action once per gravestone. And finally, we have the chests. So that's another overhaul. Instead of receiving two equipment cards as rewards at the end of the encounter, you must interact with it during the encounter to get a treasure. When you are adjacent to the chest, you spend your action and then you draw a card from the treasure deck and place it in your inventory. Then you flip the chest to the open side and uh, now you have the treasure. Only one player can interact with the chest per encounter, but you can replay that encounter whenever you spend a spark to go to the bonfire and open the chest again. These are all super cool updates and I think it will definitely enhance your core game experience, making it easier to introduce to new players and to have a little bit more pleasing experience without having to do a lot of house rules. So try them out and let us know in the comments your thoughts about them. We have reviews and unboxing video of all Dark Souls board game content, so don't forget to check some of the links over here and also in the video's description. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!